Um, this is going to be a tutorial on how to configure Riffler. Um, I'm not really going to be showing you how to use Riffler, um, other than maybe just the very basics, um, but more uh, how I utilize it. Um, so Riffler is um, an instrument. If we add it here. Um, it pretty much is a sampler. It has some drum sounds in it, and it has um, some pretty interesting guitar uh, samples. And so it, when you hit play, it's going to just start playing guitar sounds. And you can choose what the sound of the guitar is and what style the guitar should play in, and it automatically just creates um, melodies for you. So if I hit play, I don't even know what it's going to sound like. It sound like nothing, and I know why. Um, no, I don't know why. Oh, so when you first load Riffler, it wants you to choose um, what scale it is. So if you at the top, um, if you choose scale, you can choose what key you want it to be in. A lot of people are doing C. Sometimes I'll use another program to try to identify what key my song is or my sample is in, and then I'll choose my key. Um, you can choose your scales, um, what types of progressions they are. But you saw just by choosing one progression, it began to play, and it plays a uh, guitar guitar sounds because it's guitar samples. I'm gonna lower um, lower it. Okay. And if we were to continue checking the different scales out. Um, and so you can see that you can easily change the key. And let's go to the next icon. Um, so, you know, feel free to see what different feels there are and, you know, how it, it changes. This is all pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, have less chords. So I was noticing we were getting a lot of chords when I had no gaps. I had a lot of gaps, I think. So. Anyway, you can go through and experiment with them. You can see just by clicking on them, they're pretty straightforward what they do. Um, and what else is there? So I think down here there's a random button, which I find really useful. <laughs> um, each time you hit create riff, it'll change the riff. So if you don't like it, you know, try creating different riffs and you may eventually hit on one that matches your song pretty well. Um, and if I hit the gear icon, there's actually an endless mode. And if you hit endless, it will essentially keep hitting that create riff. So button. So it won't be repetitive over and over again. It'll just play this part, and then when it reaches the end, it'll essentially create a different riff that's in the same style that you just saw change. So that's endless mode I find really quite useful. Um, but like I said, it's a guitar sampler. Um, there's actually some guitar effects. You can change, make it make the guitar sound different.
which is pretty cool. I mean, I think all the guitar sounds in here are, are really fabulous. I don't have any problem at all with the guitar sounds. I don't play with a lot of guitar in my music, but, you know. But you can see it's quite useful, but um, it also isn't just guitar parts, it's also, also drums. So um, if I turn up the drum volume, you get drums as well. <laughs> um, all right, so the thing is, I actually don't use the drums or the guitar in this song because I don't play with a lot of um, normal sounding drums or normal sounding guitar. So um, I could just um, add effects on it, which I do occasionally do, but what I tend to do more often is um, to just go to the, uh, amp, the amplifier and I just turn the volume down. And so now when it, I hit play, we won't hear anything. We're only hearing, so we only hear the drums because I have the drum volume up, but if I turn the drum volume down, I hear nothing. And if I go to the running, uh, the amplifier, you know, I can slowly raise the volume up until you hear the guitar. So if I turn it off though, you can see up, up at the top left here that it's actually blinking, it's sending out MIDI data. So, if I was to route that to something, we would hear it. So I'm going to connect it to um, like a synthesizer. And we have to route it to it. So all of a sudden, uh, the guitar is no longer a guitar, but it's actually a synth. And so this becomes quite useful for me. You know, I can. It's a very Michael, very Michael sound. Um, and, you know, if you want, you could just grab a piece. Um, you know, you can... Um, change your key to match your song. So the only last thing I want to show you is the drums can actually still be useful. If you were to go to drums and you see down here it starts on MIDI channel 1. I don't like to conflict with Koala, so I usually move it to any other number. Let's try MIDI channel 2. All right. And we can bring in an instrument for... Yeah, pause. Uh, bring in a drum instrument. So here's FAC drum kit. And I can route it to FAC drum kit. And we said MIDI channel 2. So if you click on the little um, thumb bar here on the left of the instrument, you can say that the connection, which is Riffler, should show up on no channels. If you click the none button and you click 2 to turn on just 2. So it only listens on channel 2. And if we hit play now... Riffler, go to the drums, so we only have hi-hat, so if I click on that, um, oh, I know what the issue is, okay, so um, this MIDI octave 8VE that you can change. So this is changing the octave of the MIDI notes and so as it gets sent to the drum app. 
And so I think I was just not hitting any notes. You know, another way to do this same thing is um, is to go back to the little thumb bar here. And you can change it here to transpose. So if I go, I went down two octaves, but if I just click the semitone button, back up. Eventually I can hit sounds that I like. You know. And let's see if we can get maybe more drums. Um, first four four. That gives you a pretty good sense, you know. I don't tend to use the drum kit very much. I'll tend to just connect it to a synth the way I just did. Um, but it gets me a, a way to get melodies that match or chord pr chords that match or, you know, depending on what how you set it in Riffler. Um, or, you know, and you could just record it directly into Koala and just use little snippets, you know, make your own loops of melodies, or, you know, I tend to just use it like this, where it's just constantly running the, the um, synth, you know, and I'm just choosing what style it's playing in. Um, if you like the style, you know, you don't have to do it. Um, you can you can export up MIDI as a MIDI file and import it into a MIDI app, and then lock in on that specific um, piece, you know, that, that MIDI information. So instead of just doing a, a Koala sample, where it's flattened and sampled, you could actually just uh, import the MIDI data into a MIDI app like Helium and then um, have it locked in and not have it constantly changing. Because right now I have it set to evolve, you know, endless mode. But you could turn off endless mode as well and save it as a preset. Um, there's a variety of different ways to do it. Um, and, you know, there's some really great features within here. I, I didn't really walk you through how the app works because I don't use it that much. <laughs> um, so, and I'm not an expert at it, but I think that gives you a good sense.